Hi, welcome back to my channel and for today's video, we will be talking on our real analysis series, The Measure Function. So for those who have been here for a very long time, thank you so much for your unsurpassable support. And if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe so that you'll be updated on a lot of videos that I'll be uploading soon. So let's say we consider a length function. So let's say we have an L, a length function from I to um, close interval 0 to positive infinity. So that means we're actually considering extended um, part of the interval. So your I here is collection of all intervals. So this is a collection of all intervals in R. So your R is a set of real numbers. So meaning if you are taking the length of um, the um, L of this I here, so that means it's actually the length of the interval I. So that means your I here is in the script I. So if A here is not an interval, um, so suppose your A here is not an interval, then if you are gonna... Um, take the um, L of A, so this is not defined, but if, let's say for example, you have um, A less than B, so if you take the L of the interval A, B, so that's gonna be B minus A. So that's how we define the um, L of something. So that means to say if you are interested to take the L of um, let's say the set containing 1, 2, 3. So this set is not um, an interval so th therefore it's not defined. So that's how we work on the measure function. So let us formally define um, the definition of a measure function. So given that you have a function mu, mu okay so it should be mu sorry um, that maps from the script M to the close interval 0 to positive infinity. So your script M here is a sigma algebra. So this is a measure. If number 1, um, this number 1 will be satisfied. Um, that is mu of M T is 0. And um, this one thing here is the thing that we're going to evaluate since this is not just an ordinary M T. Number two, um, this a, um, if you're given with a s collection of AI, um, your script I is uh, from the set of natural numbers, then the um, this set here is a disjoint collection of sets from the sigma algebra. Then you have the mu of the infinite union of AIs is the actually the infinite sum of the mu of AI. Okay, so let's consider an example here. So let's say um, we have a non-empty set X and um, your script M is the power set of X. Um, take note that we have shown this already to be a sigma algebra. So define um, the mu from script M to the close interval 0 to positive infinity by um, mu of A equals positive infinity if a is infinite and uh, we have this as the cardinality of a if a is finite so we are gonna show if this mu is a measure otherwise if we are not going to um, qualify these two requirements for the uh, measure function then this mu is not a measure function so let's evaluate this okay so Observe that mu of mt, um, if you notice, the mt is a finite set. So therefore, according to the definition of your mu, if when this is finite, you take the cardinality. But the cardinality of mt is 0. So condition 1 is satisfied. Okay, now let's go uh, to condition 2. So we have let the set ai... Um, this one here be a pairwise disjoint so of course this is a pairwise disjoint sets in script M okay 
So if this is a pairwise disjoint sets in script M, then we will consider um, cases. So let's start with case one. So case one, um, there are uh, from these collections of AI, there exists at least one of them to be infinite. Okay, so that means um, your collection of AI, let's say A1, A2, up until and so on. One of these AIs can be infinite. So let's say um, there exists K in N. Of course, this is because your K is actually from the index such that your A sub K is infinite. So when this is an infinite, implication for this is that if you take the union of AI, I from 1 to infinity, of course, one of these AI is infinite. Therefore, if you take the union, this is clear, obviously, infinite. So therefore, what's the meaning of this? Um, if you take the uh, mu of um, the union of AI, I from 1 to infinity, so that means if you take the mu of this union of AI, since this is actually infinite, and according to the definition of mu, automatically, um, this is infinity. So therefore, um, this is positive infinity. But remember, your A sub K is um, already infinite. So therefore, if you take mu of A sub K, that's already infinite. Because um, the definition here again is when it is infinite, that is positive infinity. So therefore, this is also equal to this. Right? And so, um, if I'm going to add that by the sum of mu of AI, where your I is not equal to K, automatically, um, it's still positive infinity. Okay? So therefore, this is actually the sum of mu, uh, the sum of mu of ai i from 1 to infinity so therefore condition 2 is satisfied however this is only for case 1 let's try uh, evaluating case 2 so that means none of these ai's are infinite so already we've shown that um, there exists at least one of the ai's which is infinite but if all of the ai's are infinite then we're actually done that's very easy now um let's say um AI is finite for all I. Okay, but um, if AI is finite, we can consider um, subcases. So let's try with subcase 1. If AI is uh, not empty, okay, so if AI is not empty for every I in N, okay, then what's the implication here? Um, mu of AI is actually the cardinality of AI. And this is greater than zero for all i in n. But this is, uh, what's the meaning of this? Uh, if you take the sum of mu of ai, remember that mu of ai is actually the cardinality. It's greater than zero. But this is an infinite sum. So when it's infinite sum, therefore, the answer is infinite. Okay, so by action of cho choice, there exists an E, which is a subset of the union of AI, I from 1 to infinity, such that um, E intersection AI is a single tone set for all I in N. So, what's the meaning of this? Um, your E, since if you take the uh, intersection with AI, you get a single tone set. And remember, there are infinite number of AI. So meaning to say, your E is infinite. And so when it's infinite, because E is a subset of the union of infinite number of AIs, meaning this AI from 1 to infinity is infinite as well. And so if you take the mu of the union of AI, I from 1 to infinity, that's infinite. So by equating this, you're done. But that's only for subcase 1. So what about the subcase 2? So you remember our subcase 1, your AI is not empty for all I. So what happens if 
um, your AI is not empty for only a finite number of AI. So that means there exists a natural number such that um, your AN is empty in this case for every n that's small n greater than or equal to n. So that means um, you only have a finite number of um, AIs which are not empty. So you only have to consider, if this is the case, then you only have to consider um, two sets. Let's say A1 and um, A2. Okay. So what's the implication? Um, this is mu of... A1 union A2. Um, this is actually mu of A1 plus mu of A2. Why? Why can we say that we can just take the mu, uh, the sum of the mu's to the mu of the union? Simply because we assume in the first place that AI, the set containing AI, is a pairwise disjoint collection. So therefore, they, um, A1 and A2 are pairwise disjoint. This is just the sum of mu of AI I, from 1 to 2. And this is actually the union from 1 to 2. So we're done. Therefore, this um, we've jumped into conclusion that our mu is a measure. That's it. Okay, so let's go back to example 1. This is a measure, and in fact, this is actually a what we call counting measure. That's it. Okay, so let's consider another example. So let's say we have, um, so let x here be not empty. Your script m is the set of, is the collection of all subsets of x. Then um, if you fix um, the x sub 0 in x and define um, this way, so, and define the mu from script m to the close interval 0 to positive infinity by mu of e equals 1 if your x sub 0 is in e. And this is 0 if x of 0 is not in e. So, we will show that if this... Um, mu here is a measure. Um, remember that... Um, mu of empty mu of empty that means there's no element on it so therefore x sub zero cannot be found on the empty set so what's according to the definition of mu if x sub zero cannot be found on e which in this case is the empty then that's zero so therefore mu of zero is zero and so we have shown the qualification for number one on the definition okay um let Let's check for number two qualification. So let AI of the set containing AI such that your I is um, in N. Um, this is actually a subset of the script M. Where AI intersection AJ is empty for all I not equal to J. So it, this is just another way of saying that your A, your the set is actually a pairwise disjoint collections of the script M because their intersection is empty. So we will have to evaluate um, two cases again. So let's say case one. Um, case one is X sub zero is an element of the union of AI, I from one to infinity. So there's a possibility that um, X sub zero can be found in the union of AI. So what does it mean? Your X sub zero, since this can be found in the union, then this can be found in AK. This is for some k in n. So what's the implication? This implies that... Okay, I'm going to use ai instead. So this implies that your x sub 0, because this is found on ai, this cannot be found in aj. Why again? Why again? Because again, um, ai and aj are pairwise disjoint. So that means they don't have a common element. So since x sub 0 is already in AI, you cannot let x sub 0 to be element of AJ. So this is again for all I not equal to J. Okay, so what's the implication? This is the mu of the union of AK. Um, this is K from 1 to infinity. 
So this is equal to the um, a x sub 0 is in the union. So therefore, by the definition of mu, this is equal to 1. And this is equal to mu of a i. Remember, x sub 0 is found on a i. So therefore, um, we can, um, the mu of a i is 1. So even if you add this here by mu of a j, um, your j is not equal to i. So that means um, x sub 0 cannot be found in all a j's except i. So they're all 0. So if you take the sum of 0, that's still 0. So this is already 1. So therefore, this is also equal to this, this one here. So we're done. And that's only for a case 1. So let's say case 2. What happens if x sub 0 is not found in the union of a i? i from 1 to infinity. So if this is not found in the union, meaning to say that x sub 0 is not an element of a i. That's for all i because this is not even found in the union. So what's the implication? Mu of the union of a i, i from 1 to infinity because you cannot find x sub 0 there. So this is automatically 0 according to the definition. And so since this is for all a i, you cannot find the x sub 0. So uh, mu of a i is 0. And even if you take the sum of all zeros, that's still 0. So therefore this is equal and this is also equal. So we're done. Therefore, this is already equal and this is equal so we've shown the claim and we've satisfied the number two so therefore this example number two is actually a measure and in fact this is um the famous dirac measure that's it so that's all for now thank you so much for watching so if you have any questions or clarification you can comment down there so that i would know and we can discuss on that have a great day. Bye for now.